The tech industry faces a critical skills gap that could impact growth and innovation. With the projected 85 million developer vacancies worldwide by 2030 and potentially costing over 144 trillion rand, finding solutions is urgent. To discuss how increasing diversity, particularly by involving more women, might help address this challenge, we now turn to Akhil Bodu, co-founder of Zao. Akhil, thank you so much uh, for speaking to us this evening on Newsnight. Uh, tell us about this scarcity of skills in the tech development industry. What's caused it and, and how big is it? Yeah, I mean, like we're talking about huge levels of unemployment. Firstly, it's such a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you so much for having me, right? Um, the, the biggest problem that we have, we're talking about unemployment rates of not the 40% um, in youth itself. And now if we dive deeper into the, the demographics where we look at, um, you know, women's inclusivity, there's more challenges. 92% of, um, of the tech industry, according to a stats report, I think from 2022, said that 92% um, of, of the industry is dominated by males. And on top of that, we're talking about a skills gap where, um, this, we're talking about 45% of unemployment. Uh, this is coming from the fact that there's a huge demand of technical talent in industry, right? Um, but there's not good enough talent in industry to actually fill these jobs. So on one hand, we have the youth who, who lack the, the, the sufficient skills to actually participate in the, in the roles that are required in, in tech startups and, and various companies, banks, corporations. Um, tech has become an integral part of all of our lives. So we're going to come to some of the solutions in a moment, but first I want to find out from you, what's the traditional talent pool from which companies uh, in the tech sector recruit from here in South Africa? Yeah, I mean, um, we're, we're talking about a ver various range of, uh, you know, there's, there's different, there's different um, categories, right? Um, there's full stack developers, um, we're talking about data scientists. Uh, the pool of talent normally comes out of either universities or, you know, institutions that are um, running boot camps, for example. For example, at Zio, we run boot camps and we have a 92% absorption rate where we've designed our training in a manner where we can actually help individuals get jobs in industry. So the pool of talent normally comes either from these institutions mm -hmm. and there's like a small minority, minority of talent that might not necessarily have like, you know, formal background or any kind of uh, special qualification because the good thing about the tech industry is they purely look at your past experience. So, so this small is... minority might actually freelancers and uh, mm. and people who don't necessarily have professional experience yeah. so that's the, the the segment we want to look at for the potential to close that skills gap because you're essentially saying with the right mentorship you can take uh, young people and especially young women from communities where they haven't had previous exposure to computers computer literacy um, and you can upskill them relatively quickly to a point where they can fill some of those skills gaps. Is that correct? And, and is there a model which is currently being applied? Yes, that is correct. Um, the way we do this is we've, we've done a lot of research around what exactly companies require. I mean, that's where the model begins. The structuring of the model begins from what does the company actually need, right? Um, in their roles, what are the key components they're looking at? Normally, to get, if we get a bit technical, there's the hard skills, you know, where the ability to actually write code, problem solve, and then there's the soft skills. Are they a good fit into the team and so on, right? So we, we kind of work backwards from what exactly industry requires and we curate our training programs accordingly, right? Uh, currently, our training programs have been designed in a way where um, it's very much projects driven. Um, you're focusing less on the theory, but more on building real applications and gaining real problem solving abilities, right? So that you're not stuck in the theoretical loop, which is, I think, a problem that I experienced, at least myself, when I was studying, right? Where it got too theoretical, but not practical enough. So the model is very, very much driven by practical experience, right? Because in industry, at the end of the day, um, you're going to be solving real problems. The, the work that you do is, is very practical. So our whole model is driven by what exactly is needed in companies and a lot of practical experience to kind of check the boxes that companies um, require. So on the one hand, we've got this massive skills gap that is growing over time. Um, and on the other gap, or, or on the other side, we've got a very low uh, employee retention among women employed in the tech industry. Why is that? 
Interesting. Yeah. So um, I think the it, it, it comes down to various reasons, right? Um, so for example, it, ca it can come down to company culture as well, right? Um, within the co company uh, itself, some companies, because it is a very male dominated industry, there might be some kind of biases, you know, oh. that might be created in the culture, right? For example, and it might be unconscious, not, not willingly, right? Um, so, and that might f create some kind of isolation, you know? Um, and, and, and this, this, this applies, you know, where women might find it uh, a bit more challenging to actually stay at a particular company because they might not feel like their ideas are being welcomed enough uh, compared to like, you know, males, for example. So the company culture plays a big part, right? Uh, I think also company policies, you know, um, like for example, if, 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 you know, if anybody gets pregnant, right, there should be some kind of way to enable them through that process as well, right? So there has to be some kind of programs and procedures that companies have to introduce, at least tech companies and the tech teams that kind of help women kind of stick with the company, right? So the, I think the effort has to come more from the companies, you know, to make them feel like they really belong there, right? I think also more mentorship is, is lacking, right? Because it is a male dominated industry, majority of the mentors that we're talking about are actually males, right? Um, and it would be better to actually see more women becoming mentors and actually guiding more women into the industry. Mm -hmm. And I think that will also help them with their career advancement, right? So I think the retention, I think a lot more effort has to be created from within companies to, to, make, to improve the retention um, of women. But definitely opportunities for young un unemployed women in South Africa to look at the tech sector for their next job as that uh, skills gap uh, looms ever larger. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to us this evening. That was Akhil Bodu, co-founder of Zao, telling us about uh, the growing skills gap in the tech industry.